Okay, here we are with uh, Michael again, taking a break from film, filming our latest uh, training DVD on motivation and play. Uh, a quick little word on that is that uh, we're showing people how to take the skills that they learned in the DVD that we did uh, with food and the, the DVD that we did with tub and how to combine them and use these skills to motivate your dog to want to play with you and to teach you how many different ways there are to reward your dog with these various uh, tools. But here, we're taking a break. Uh, we've had a number of different Q&A sessions over the last day and a half. Uh, we had like 25 pages of questions. A lot of the questions were around problems that people had with recalls. So rather than have uh, asked the same question three or four or five times, uh, Michael and I decided that he would give a little talk on problems with recalls. Absolutely, so it's probably the, in my opinion, the most important uh, command in dog training. So to come when called is the one uh, absolutely essential non-negotiable behavior that we train. So in my opinion, I could live with a dog that doesn't sit, that doesn't retrieve, <laughs> that doesn't jump, but I cannot live with a dog that doesn't come when called. This is an incredibly important part of it. So we put huge amounts of energy into working on this specific behavior, starting from the very beginning. So I'll kind of walk you in a skeletal way through our recall process. There are going to be some parts when we get to talking about the pressure that you're going to want to get extra information on, but I'll give you the basic in a nutshell encapsulation. So we start with little puppies. As soon as we get them home, the recall work commences. So we charge our marker and we start doing what we call restrained recalls, meaning somebody holds your puppy on a harness, the handler teases the puppy, runs, they call the puppy, we release the puppy, the puppy comes running to the handler, the handler rewards the puppy extensively for coming. So we, do, we are building drive to come to the handler through use of restraint and frustration and heavy duty rewards. When we have our little puppies around the house and out in public, we always have something to give them when we call them. When I have a puppy and I'm teaching them about recalls in the beginning, they n I never don't have something on me, food and toys at all times. They always get reinforced for coming when called. The other thing is just some basic recall 101 rules when the dog's first learning about a recall. Do not call the dog away from something that's fun. If your dog is out playing in the yard with another dog, if your dog's at the fence looking at stuff going by and it's excited, don't call your dog. Your dog's not going to come, they're going to fail, and you're going to have to go get them. Just go get them to begin with. Do not call them in those circumstances. Later on, of course, we want our dogs to call away from interesting things. But by trying to call your puppy in the early stages, they learn that there are moments when they can and, can and cannot come when called. So we don't want that to start happening. The other thing is do not call your puppy to put your puppy up. So don't call your puppy and then put them in their crate. Don't call your puppies outside having fun. Don't call them inside and then just close the door and leave them inside. Call them, give them something they want. And if you're going to put them up, go get them instead in the beginning. So that's step one. Build as much drive as possible. Reinforce the recall extensively. Don't call your dog uh, away from fun things. Don't call your dog to put them up. And don't call your dog in a situation where you, there's any chance that they won't do it. The next step is to teach our puppy to call away from something interesting. This is a huge part of it. So a dog looking at you or somebody holding your dog and knows that you have something coming when called is one thing, but your dog being focused somewhere else and coming when called is completely different. It's a totally different behavior in their mind. So we set that up in the beginning. So I have someone else take food and they lure my puppy. And my puppy's following the food in their hand. I call my puppy, and as soon as I call my puppy, they cover the food up, and they stop moving. They don't look at the puppy. I call the puppy, call the puppy, and the puppy peels back to come to me and gets rewarded. So the puppy l learns the beginnings of calling away from something interesting. That something interesting, I must have control over. So I have to enlist the help of a friend who will shut off their access to what's happening when I call them. I can't do this out in the world around other distractions that I have no control over because if my puppy sees something interesting, I call them, that thing runs and doesn't stop, my puppy's gonna blow me off and then I'm in trouble. They learn again that there's moments when they don't have to come. So we want control of that. 
And so once they'll do that, they get better and better and more fluent at that, then we increase the arousal level. I'll have somebody run and have my puppy chase them. I call the puppy, and when I call, they stop. And eventually, I won't ha they won't have to stop. Somebody can be running, teasing my puppy with food or a toy. My puppy's chasing after them. I call my dog. My dog just peels away from them and comes flying back to me to get a reward. So now my dog has a relatively good understanding of a recall and a recall away from something kind of interesting. The next step is to teach my dog about pressure. So I have to teach my dog about leash pressure. We talk about that in our... Uh, healing DVD, but our dog has to learn to respond to the leash. And at that stage, I need to take my dog out. I take my dog out on a long line or a flexi lead, and I call my dog and I turn them towards me with the leash, and when they turn with the leash, I reinforce them, setting them up to potentially use pressure on them if necessary. And then we may layer over an electric collar as well, depending on the dog, their temperament, our training system, whatever. There's a whole different uh, progression in conditioning dog to an electric collar, which I recommend you get help with somebody experienced. We have uh, videos on the, the talk about the process of teaching the dog about the electric collar, and I would go through and check that stuff out. It's kind of a complicated process, uh, but you want to make sure you've done it correctly. Now I've taught my dog about pressure, the leash, and potentially the electric collar, away from those things, and now I can go out into the world and set up circumstances where my dog is going to get absorbed in something, wants to chase a squirrel, wants to go see somebody that's across the, see another dog, whatever it is. And now I have ways of reinforcing the recall when I call them and they don't come. Whether I need to use a leash correction on a long line or a flexi lead or whether I need to use an electric collar, whatever it is. You want to be very careful that your dog has a good understanding of recalling away from something interesting before you apply pressure. Because there's a concept called superstitious associations that can happen relatively easily. When your dog is focused on something else, if you correct them, they can associate that correction with the thing they were focused on. So I want them to be very fluent in the process of turning away from something and very fluent in how to shut off pressure before I apply it to truly distracting circumstances in real life. But at the end of the day, we all go out and I teach my dog, I throw a ball for my dog, I call my dog while he's chasing the ball, and I make him turn away from the ball. We do a whole bunch of different games like that, and then we take it to real world distractions. So by the end of our training process, my dog could be out in the field chasing a rabbit, and if I call them, the dog will peel off and come running back. And that would be my goal, that my dog will come no matter what they're doing and no matter what's happening out in the world. But it's a long-term process, and you have to be very careful about each of the steps, not to jump steps and not to give your dog the opportunity to fail. And then get help with the pressure part of it, you know, with somebody that's been through the process and knows what they're doing on that front, so you don't create a problem. Uh, when you introduce pressure. And there are some dogs that will not need the pressure portion, but it's a rare dog. Because in recalls, we have a problem with what we call competing motivators. When I'm using reward-based training, uh, I'm relying on my dog's desire for the reward. And their desire for the reward has to override their desire for other things in the environment to be effective. So if my dog is crazy for a tennis ball and I teach him to recall and give him a tennis ball and he likes a tennis ball better than he likes anything else in the world, I may not need to use pressure on that dog. But it's a rare dog that likes the reward that you have more than it likes anything else in the world. And almost every dog is going to need you to remind them at some point that they have to come when called, even if they don't want to, when we run into competing motivators. Good one. That's good. That's going to help a lot of people. Uh, if you're one of the people that does have problems with uh, the recall, I recommend you watch this, uh, this little lecture nine or ten times because there's a lot of information in here. And you can't, like, like Michael says, you can't skip steps. So watch it again and again and again. That's kind of the way we produce our videos. We put so much information in our videos, they're not meant, they're not movies to be watched once. I tell people, uh, Watch them 20 or 30 times, because every time you watch or listen to what Michael just said, you're going to pick up something new. So it was really a good explanation.